We welcome all of you who are here tonight and those who have joined us in live stream for this time of fellowship and mutual edification. We're glad once again to welcome those of you that are on live stream also. I would like to say a word before I uh, begin of something that I believe the Lord has led me into. I believe God has raised us up to minister to people that are involved in the work of the Lord. That when they come here, they're built up in the most holy faith. I, I guess this is not just, I'm not speaking just generally. I mean a specific, yeah. I'm undergoing to, to let that be made known publicly. We've had different people come here. The last two families that have come here have been involved in the work of the Lord and acknowledged no one has ever prayed for them. Yeah. Uh -huh. So these, uh, publicly we're talking about. Yeah. I think this is a generally neglected field. I think that a lot of uh, people that labor in the f fields, mm -hmm. people call them missionaries, I don't think they're ministered to very much by anybody. Yeah. I, really, I really don't. And when I talk to them, it's, they confirm this is the case. They have brethren with them, but they're generally not as advanced as they are. And so I think God has raised us up to, to do this yeah. Amen. and to display before them what an assembly is like because they both, they, they're going to take this back. Now we've got the last two two brethren are going to take this to other countries. Yes. This family church, they've had, they've got a household church. Mm -hmm. They have a picture of things that can happen. That's what we we're not trying to present a pattern of what to do. That's right. We want to present the potential of what can be done because we we've not optimized this, right. but we're working on it. <laughs> So uh, I want to just set that before you as I, I think that's what the Lord has called, one thing God has called us to do. Now tonight we're in Jude, we're going to take verses 22 and 23. Next week, may, week after next, maybe the last one, I'm not sure yet. Our Jews admonished, admonished us to keep ourselves in the love of God, looking for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ unto eternal life. But now he's going to address our conduct toward other people because the kingdom is bigger than ourselves. Yes. Well, that's kind of an understatement of the evening, but... You keep yourselves in the love of God not only for self-preservation, mm -hmm. but so you can be a fit vessel in the hands of the Lord. Now Jude's going to address, address the matter of our involvement with other people, particularly those that are living in sin and headed for sure condemnation if something's not done. How do you address people like this? That's what he's going to, what he's going to talk about. This will add a new dimension, see, to what we believers are to do. None of us are an island unto ourselves, but there'll be a temptation to do that. To kind of isolate yourself off in a corner and that, but you, we're not going to pass laws about, about this matter, but we're going to encourage everybody to come out <laughs> into the public of the, particularly of the assembly. If you can't, if you can't show yourself in the assembly, you're not going to do too well showing yourself to anybody else. That's for sure. Now, Jude will teach us: as long as we're in this world, we can't be reckless and thoughtless 
in our associations with other people. We, we have been delivered from the law and delivered from the present evil world and delivered from the power of darkness and delivered from the wrath to come. Jesus has made us free indeed, as he himself said. We who are dead in trespasses and sins. And a way of escape has been made for us to get out of any, any temptation. He that's in us is greater than he that's in the world. Now the naive may imagine that that makes you all pretty, pretty safe, just pretty guaranteed we're going to make it okay. But it's, it's not like that. It's not like you're living in doubt. That's not it, but we're not home yet, and as long as we're in the body, we're going to have to fight. Amen. You can't have... You can't have turtle Christianity, mm -hmm. where you shrink up in your shell and get, try and get away from things. As you, you may do that for a while, but eventually you've got to come out of the shell and fight mm -hmm. for your soul. There are fleshly lusts that war against the soul right now. There's ungodliness and worldly lusts that you have to reject. There's another law in your members warring against the law of your mind. See? So we can't afford to ignore these things because they're all liabilities. There's, we have safety factors, but we have liabilities. And Jude's going to touch on one of them tonight. That whenever you're around people that aren't in the fight... You are in a danger zone. Amen. That's right. It may be mama, but you're still in a danger zone. That's, right. yeah. Yeah. That's what we want to underscore here tonight. Amen. We'll be dealing with verses 22 and 23. And if some have compassion, making a difference. Yeah. I say, making a difference. Yeah. And others, save with fear, pulling them out of the fire, hating even the garments spotted by the flesh. <clears throat> Amen. Uh -huh. Some word. Just as Jesus was concerned for the condition of men, so are we concerned for the condition of men. Yeah. Amen. We're not content just to discuss it with one another. We're concerned about the condition of men, particularly people that wear the name of Christ. Now he says, of some, not of everybody, not, not of everybody, of, not of everybody, of some. Some other versions say on some people, or some versions say those who doubt. In New, America, New Revised Standard Version, it says some who are wavering. Mm -hmm. The text doesn't say this, but that yeah. they added a little bit of their theology there for us. Yeah. Some who are disputing. Those who have doubts. New Living Translation says those whose faith is wavering. Well, that, that, that may be true. Those who argue against you who doubt. The Living Bible. Those who continue to waver through doubts, William's New Testament. Those who are in their uncertainty, good speed. Those who hesitate in the faith, Message Bible. And those who waver in doubt, the Amplified Bible. So you see there's a lot of different views to it. But it is talking about somebody who is not what they ought to be, to say the least. These are people who have not fallen into the depths of sin, and some have compassion. They haven't fallen into the depths of sin. They're, they're, they don't, they're not thrusting the Word of God from them. They're not wholly given to depravity. These are rather people that are teachable. 
He, they receive what you say. Think it over and ponder it. They don't argue against the truth. They may be unlearned and ignorant, but they're still interested. It's the people like the Philippian jailer who didn't know anything, but said, what must I do to be saved? All right, there's a person. You can have compassion on that person. There are people like Agrippa, who was willing to hear Paul out. Said he was almost persuaded to become a Christian, as a matter of fact, after we see. People like that. Yeah. We're talking about who to have compassion on now. Perhaps they're convicted of their own sin, like the people on the day of Pentecost. Yeah. What shall we do? I can have compassion on people like that. Yeah, amen. That's their sins, these people's sins that he's talking about, are often of a lesser nature. They haven't produced hardness and stubbornness. And have compassion. We can have compassion. Or have mercy. Such people must not be dealt with harshly or crudely. They're bruised reeds. And smoking flax. Can't be quenched. There's something there, but it's not enough. But there's something there. See, you recognize. Talking about believers now. My persuasion is who he's talking about. Believers who are not up to par, but they're they're open. They're still still sensitive. They've already been smitten in their conscience, apparently. Holy Spirit having convicted them of sin. Now some versions in my judgment are greatly in error here. One Bible says that rebu rebuke and reprove them. This is this, this isn't this is not compassion. Mm -hmm. Compassion means the person is is beyond reproof and rebuke, having to be reproved and rebuked. But they're not they're not up to par yet. But they're, they're they don't have to be reproved and rebuked. Other people, you can't have compassion. He's going to tell you, you can't have compassion on them. And in your heart you can, but it, uh -huh. you got to deliver so another word to them. Yeah. So Jude says, have compassion on such people like that good Samaritan that found that man who fell among thieves, you know, and there he was half dead. He had compassion. Uh -huh. He had compassion on him. Having compassion involves being gentle. Uh -huh. Not with a hammer in your hand. Having our speech seasoned with grace, always with grace, see, seasoned with salt. When Paul was with the new converts of Thessalonica, he said to those, We were gentle among you, even as a nurse cherisheth her children. All right, that's what we're talk that's what we're talking about. And some have compassion. In view of the religious corruption that's rampant in the land, see, this is, this is an important word. Because there's a lot of people who are way out there in left field. But you can have compassion on them because they're still, they're still open and they're still tender and gentle. Maybe the Lord sends you at the appropriate time. Yes. A couple of examples. One is the prodigal son. Yes. When he came back and confessed that he was not worthy to be. That's right. His son wanted to be a servant, and the father changed his clothes, put a ring on his hand, and killed yeah. the fatted calf. That was like a picture of compassion. compassion. Where he ran after him and fell on him and kissed him. Uh -huh. Another one is when uh, Jesus dealt with the woman who was caught in the act of That's adultery right. and her persecutors, mm -hmm. you know, the ones who dragged her into the streets yeah. and had no compassion at all uh -huh. toward yeah. her at all. They were simply using her as a ploy to cast Jesus. Remember, Jesus spoke up. Oh, yes. And uh, he, he asked her questions, but it was like a display of compassion. He says, is there anyone that condemns you? Yes. And then he said, neither do I condemn thee. But he said, go your way and sin no more. Now, that entire word was an act of compassion. compassion. Mm -hmm. But see, that didn't become like the staple message of Jesus that he cried throughout Jerusalem. Yeah. I don't yeah. condemn you. I don't condemn anybody. Yeah. And it wasn't like that, but he could see that this right. could yeah. make a difference. That's mm -hmm. right. You yeah. got it. Yeah. That's exactly it. 
It also shows that if this is going to be done and done properly, you're going to have to have some wisdom. Oh, yes. Yeah. So that's where it says making a difference. Yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah. Making a difference. It's the judgments involved here. Is this the kind of person, yeah, yeah. like the woman that was taken in the act of adultery, is this, is this kind of situation? Or is this a Pharisee situation? Oh, yeah. See? So you've got, if you don't, can't discern it, then just step out of the activity. Yeah. Really yes? I remember watching a, a, a movie about soldiers in the Second World War. They were in comp they were in this heavy combat situation and the medic they showed the medic going along the line. And the medic would go up to a soldier and he would quickly assess, can I help this person? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Or not. If he could he would. If he didn't, he'd move on to the next person. Mm. That's, I think that's a good illustration well, of what you're is. saying here. You you've got to be able to like a spiritual medic, you've got to be able yes. to say, I I think I can help this person, mm -hmm. or I, I can't help, we can't help it. There's some people you can't help them. Mm -hmm. That's right. Mm. Yeah. Some Amen. people spend years trying to do something that hasn't been done. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You have to assess yourself. Yeah. <laughs> I can't sit in judgment on anybody uh -huh. on that area, but all I can say is you it's questionable whether you should spend much time in fruitless labors. Yeah, yeah. Jesus didn't. Right. When the city didn't receive him, he uh, moved on. Right. Paul didn't do it. When they didn't receive him, he moved on. Amen. He gave them like a day, maybe, maybe in a couple of places a week or two. Don't waste your time. You, that, but that, as Brother Bob says, requires wisdom. Yeah. You've got, you're the one that has to make the difference. See, the person that's doing the activity is the person that has to make a difference. Yeah, it's just, there is a difference, in other words. <laughs> Keep in mind that a brother that was overtaken in a fault, that's a mild way of stating it, but overtaken in a fault, he got, out, got off the road. Paul says in the Galatians is chapter 6 verse 1, he says, You that are spiritual, restore such a one. Yeah. By in the spirit of meekness, mm -hmm. consider yourself yeah. that, you, that you're not taken away with the air yourself. Now, this is true of anybody you talk to, whether it's a person that's alienated from God, uh -huh lost or or a fallen brother but in my opinion this is my opinion but in my opinion the most important thing is the restoration of a brother uh -huh. yeah. that trumps the other work uh -huh. yeah. uh, let me establish that <clears throat> let me say it again that where the church is unstable mm -hmm. the outreach has to be hit uh -huh. on hold for a while now this, Paul, Paul did this, so we have a case of this being done. Yes, that's right. Church of Corinth that was in spiritual shambles, and that's why he wrote the first yeah. Corinthian letter. Then he sent Titus to find out the, mm -hmm. the state, how have they done, how they do, how they shaping up or not, mm -hmm. and he's waiting for Titus. Yeah. He mentions this in 2 Corinthians 10, 15. He says that he, uh, when he was at Troas, a great door was opened to him. But instead of going, he went, he went to Macedonia instead. He didn't enter the door, he went to Macedonia because he said he, he, was, he had much concern about the Corinthians and he, Titus hadn't showed up and so he... He put the thing on hold. Yeah. He didn't enter in that door. That's right. Yeah. Really yes. I consider that comment that you made where our church is unstable, the outreach needs to be put on hold. Um, I consider the parallel of when you're going to plant a garden, the weeds and stones have to come out before you can plant that garden. Oh, yes. And the garden yeah, will be quenched. Very good. Yeah, that's right. Now, when he, uh, 
When he wrote the Corinthians about this, here's what he said. When your faith is increased, that we may be enlarged by you according to the, our rule abundantly to preach the gospel in regions beyond you. What he's saying was, I'm not going, I'm not moving on till you folk are straightened out. That's what he was saying. As a country, a person might say, well, Paul should have entered into that door. Well, I trust Paul more than I trust your analysis, that's Amen. for sure. But at any rate, you see what a high priority, and you ought to, anybody who's in Christ should be able to figure this out. You should be able to figure out that the person who's going out to reach others has got to be soundly grounded himself, and he can't represent a group of backslidden people. That should be pretty plain, but believe it or not, it's not clear at all. I don't know of any church that that's clear to. Making a difference. He's talking about restoring somebody who's named the name of the Lord. And therefore, we're dealing with others. We must be able to make a difference. Distinguishing, do I deal graciously here? Or do I have to take some other mode? My senses have got to be exercised or discern good and evil. I've got to be able to tell. If I can't, then let somebody else do the work. Why won't you do it? If it's somebody in your family, call somebody else in to do it. And others, that's is it. There's some people, you, you going to say something about there? Yeah, yeah I think the the rich history of the Lord dealing with Israel is uh, kind of it yeah, lays, right. lays a very good groundwork yeah, for this type of right. sermon. Mm -hmm. Because the Lord didn't waste mercy where it wouldn't make a difference. Mm -hmm. That's right. But He did give mercy where it would make a difference. Amen. You, got, you got about every example Amen. possible mm -hmm. in, the, in the prophets of the Lord addressing about every condition with all different kinds of responses from different generations, yes. different judgments, yes. different prophets, different different times, all different kinds of spiritual conditions. Mm -hmm. you've, you've got it all back there. And sometimes the, the Lord would deal very mercifully and tenderly and the people responded. And sometimes it, it took like a hammer and a and like yelling and out of heaven and judgments and captivity to get their attention. That's right. So the Lord did what was needed. Amen. Yeah. So the Lord wouldn't expect us to waste mercy Amen. where it's not. But he also expects us to not be harsh mm -hmm. where someone's tender. That's right. Amen. That's, that's a, the person has to make the difference. Yeah, right. He has to distinguish the difference. Yeah. And others... These are people who need to they need to be corrected and brought in line, but they're not the same way. Yeah. These are compared to those who are others are compared to those who are receptive, who who you can be gracious to. And then there's others <laughs> that's not the case. Save here means rescue or give salvation to. There's other texts where people are said to save people. Under salvation we're talking yeah. about. You probably heard people say, well, we can't save anybody. Well, in one sense that's true, and there's another sense in which it isn't. Here's a couple of things Paul said. He said, um, if by any means I may provoke to emulation them that are my flesh and might save some yeah. of them. Then he said to the Corinthians, I, I, to the weak I became as weak by that he didn't mean I was weak too. What he meant was, if the weak thought he couldn't eat meat, I didn't eat meat when I was around him. That's what that's what he means. Yeah, yeah. To the weak I became as weak. That I might get, gain the weak, I am made all things to all men that I might by all means save. Yeah. Save some. So when Paul was a Greek, if he took, he made a practice of taking vows. He didn't, he didn't do them there. See, he did. 
he purposely adapted not in his spirit right. but in the appearance yeah. that he might save some Amen. Yeah. and some make a difference mm -hmm. and others save save with fear mm -hmm. now, when I was younger I thought that being scare them to tell them about hellfire. Well, you do tell them about hellfire, but the fear is in the person who's doing the saving. Yeah. Uh -huh. Amen. Yeah. Some versions say, I uh, make this pretty clear. New American Standard said, have mercy with fear. See, so that's, that's what he's talking about. The NIV says, mixed with fear. Other versions say, be careful, this is a living Bible, be careful, You're, you yourselves aren't pulled along into their sin. Uh -huh. yeah. With pity, mingled with fear, Weymouth, pity with dread, Williams, hmm. even though you're afraid, God's word says. So most of the translations pick up on what this, the fear is in the person mm -hmm. who is trying to correct the other brother. Mm -hmm. Fear is not what's found in the one being saved, but the one who's doing the saving. <laughs> what a word that is. I mean, you, don't, you won't hear this word very often. There's some people that are so defiled. They're so corrupt. They're so enmeshed in sin that you are in a very toxic zone when you're around them. And you got to be fearful. You might end up with two lost people instead yeah, of just yeah. one. Yeah. Well, I've known cases where this happened, where this actually did happen. That's why Paul wrote to the Galatians, Now, brethren, if a man be overtaken in a fault, isn't that a gentle way to, isn't that a gentle way to yeah. say it? Overtaken in a fault. Ye that are spiritual, restore such a one in the spirit of meekness, considering thyself, lest... Thou also be tempted. The NIV says, Watch yourself, or you may be tempted. The Amplified Bible says, Keeping an attentive eye on yourself, lest you should be tempted also. Be careful. Be careful. Mm -hmm. Be careful. Amen. The perception of the malignancy of iniquity has been greatly neutralized in our church today. Yeah. Some people actually invited in the church, they actually invited in. That's right. They will win them, we'll invite them in and win them and maybe lose half their membership while they're winning that one. Yeah. The professed church is so close to the world, it no longer sees the danger of spiritual contamination. Uh -huh. yeah. Amen. It just hobnobs too much. Yes. Amen. There's too much of the world in the church. Yeah. Amen. Professed church I'm talking about. They didn't take this word to heart, if, if, they even, if they even heard of it. Maybe some people never heard of this word. It's true, Paul said, evil communications. Don't be deceived. Don't be deceived. Don't, don't be simple on this. Evil communications corrupt good manners. Or evil companionships and communion and associations corrupt and deprave good manners and morals and character. And again, he said, a little leaven, leaven of the whole lump. So don't, uh, your heart may be broken because of so-and-so. Because you love them. That doesn't change this. Mm -hmm. Amen. Your love doesn't change this. Mm -hmm. Your concern doesn't change this. Mm -hmm. You're in a danger zone when you're around them. You better be fearful. Amen. Not cautious, fearful. Uh -huh. Yeah, Brother Given, I think you've seen this true in children. You know, you'll have a children that, uh, a child that's meek and, and temperate, and he's still a child, but you get him around a bunch of rambunctious children, the next thing you know, he's, yeah, it, he's it, rambunctious. It, it, it's, just, it's just a natural thing. Yes. You gravitate to, 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 it seems like you just gravitate to the worst. Uh, there's so much needs to be said on this. I'm, we're just going to touch on it tonight, but. This is a serious, serious matter. 
There's too much naivety Amen. among professing Christians. They don't, they can't make a difference. The professed church, as I said, is too close to the, to the world. Now, while the work of restoring souls, this is a precious work. I mean, make no mistake about it, and it, and it must continue. But I know a few people who know this warning from Jude. It's an insightful one that warns us not to have the kind of supposed mercy that imagines that friendship and tenderness will get the job done. Oh, there's some people thinking, well, I mean, I understand this. Some people think that you got someone down in the gravel pit of sin, wallowing around in it, and someone thinks that they can reach them by being tender, being compassionate. Well, Jude has a controversy with you. Yeah, amen. Amen. Right. Yeah. I've been given that look convicted to tell you about this. Now, I wasn't talking about somebody else. I was talking about me. When I was a child, the last thing that I had in my mind was stealing something. I just wasn't that way. But as soon as I got around my cousins, they wanted to go downtown and steal Hot Wheels cars out of the store. Well, what yeah. I didn't consider is when I got home how I was going to explain this Hot Wheel car to my mother. But see, I would, I'm saying that I that sounds naive, it sounds innocent, no, but it wasn't innocent. No, no. It was something that I was led to do by somebody who thought it was normal, but I never would have thought to do that. But yeah. see, it, 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 the same thing happens in the spirit. You get around somebody who, what do you mean? What are you so upset about? It's okay. Everybody loves God. No, they don't. And so they'll start getting you to think wrong. Yes. And the next thing you know, you'll, over, you'll overlook some yes. key thing. They'll start with they'll start with something that's not glaringly obvious. Yeah. But that's how that's that's how the downward trek begins. Yes. They'll get you to do something you'd never thought to do yourself. Yeah. Right. Amen. May just be going someplace at a certain time or whatever. Yeah. Now we have the case of. Uh, Jesus and his mother and brothers come to the house. These weren't like exactly degenerate people, but they weren't, they weren't what they should be at the time. His mother, Mary, and his brothers, they thought Jesus had gone berserk. Uh -huh. yeah. And so they came to take him home. Yeah. But they didn't go inside. He was teaching the people. They sent a messenger in. The messenger said, oh, he says, your mother and brothers are outside and want to talk to you. Jesus said, who are my brothers and sisters? Mm -hmm. Who is who it? I'm talking, I'm already with my brothers and sisters. Yeah. Yeah. He refused to go out to them. Uh -huh. I think maybe, maybe even some of you would, would have gone out. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but Jesus didn't. Amen. He was maybe able to make a difference. Yes. Then we have Nehemiah, he's building on the wall with the people. Sanballat and Geshem sent a message to Nehemiah to meet him, meet them in one of the villages in the plain of Ono. Nehemiah fired a message back. He said, I'm doing a great work so that I cannot come down. Why should the work cease whilst I leave it and come down to you? They repeated this four times. Four more times they made, come on, meet, and four times he rejected it. And the fifth time, Geshem came to him personally and told him there was a report that there's some kind of rebellion going on here against the governor. And made, pretending like we ought to talk about it. And then Nehemiah said, well, that's nothing but a lie. Yeah. Then he, the next thing he said was, Now therefore, O oh God, strengthen my hands. He, just, <laughs> he didn't pay attention to Geshem at all. He said, Lord, for, for the work, strengthen my hands. For the, Amen. He refused to come off the wall. He knew the truth stated in Jude. He knew that truth. Mm -hmm. That any time you're called into close proximity with the ungodly, mm -hmm. you're in danger. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. That's why you do it with fear. Yeah. 
I remember I went to work to serve the Lord, but I went to work in fear, from the sense in which I went to work in fear. This is particularly true of those that are spiritually corrupt. Yeah. Jesus was very specific in his, John was very specific in his instruction to the elect lady. We don't know what her name was, the elect lady. And here's what he said. If there come any unto you and bring not this doctrine, that's the doctrine of Christ. Receive him not into your house, neither bid him Godspeed. For he that biddeth him God's speed is partaker of his evil deeds. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Oh, that's a pretty potent word. Yeah, amen. There's these kind of people that come to your door. Uh -huh. Oh, there are. Yeah. Can you do what he said here? Hmm. He said, don't bring the doctor unto Christ. Don't even let him in your house. Amen. And don't bid him Godspeed. Don't say, God bless you or have a good day or whatever. Don't do it, because if you do, what they're doing is credited to you too. Yeah. Boy, Amen. I tell you, that's, a, yeah. that's in the Bible. That's right. By an apostle. Uh -huh. Well, let's see. He says, snatch them out of the fire. Pluck them out of the fire. The idea of plucking them out of fire is that you don't use gentle, spe gentle speech or appeals to the mercy of God. Uh -huh. You say a word that's got to be acted on immediately. Yeah. I'll give you some samples. Uh -huh. Jesus said, He that hath shall blaspheme against the Holy Ghost hath never forgiveness but is in danger of damnation. Uh -huh. That's a snatching word. Yeah, amen. You say, well, how will they know whether they spoke it or not? Well, that's, that's up to them and God, but they can know it. He wouldn't have said that. Yeah. And again, but I say unto you, whosoever is angry with his brother without a cause shall be in danger of the judgment. Whosoever shall say to his brother, Raka, that means empty head, shall be in danger of the council. <clears throat> but whosoever shall say unto him, say thou fool, shall be in danger of hell fire. That's a snatching word. Yeah. <laughs> See, that's the sort of thing you got to act on immediately. Mm -hmm. Yet another one, but whoso shall offend one of these little ones which believe in me, it were better for him to have a millstone hang around his neck, around his neck, and that he were drowned, drowned in the depth of the sea. That's a snatching word. Yeah. See? Yeah. See, he didn't speak graciously to people like this. Uh -huh. He didn't, but he was able to make a difference. Yeah. Okay. Yes. This, this thing that we're talking about here um, repels the doctrine that says you have to become like the person you're saving in order to save them. Uh -huh. Because oh, yeah. it goes against the fact that you have to have a healthy fear of what you're saving the person from and the person themselves in order yeah, to right. get them out. And when, once you do get them out, you have to get them out quickly and then you have to get out quickly yourself. That's right. Unless yeah, that's you're right. by it also. It's a guys. Yes. Someone say something? Yeah, I said amen. Oh, okay. <laughs> see, the, see, the, see, the religious Christian environment that yeah. we're in uh -huh. neutralizes all those That's words. Right. Yeah. Amen. Here's another one. Simon said to the sorcerer, Repent of this thy wickedness. That's a yeah. snatching word. You've got to do that right now. That's right. Amen. That's how you... There's some people, this is the way you've got to speak to them. Uh -huh. You say, well, it's pretty hard. Well... You're able to make a difference. This is what's got to be said. There's some people you don't say God loves you and you can be saved and here's what you need to do. Here's what you need to do. You need to repent or you're going to perish. Yeah. Amen. That's what we call tough love. Tough love. Yeah. It's, it's not, some people <laughs> interpret this like you're being hateful. I uh -huh. know it. Oh, yeah. But that's not, that's, not, that's not why you say this. You don't, you don't say, you say this so that maybe this will wake the person up. Uh -huh. exactly and right. they'll repent. So you, you still have their, you still have their best interest in that's mind. That's right. Uh -huh. Tough love involves loving the truth. What is good, loving God first. Yes, that's right. Yeah. And so you stand up to somebody who challenges that love. That's mm -hmm. right. Then he adds this word, hating even the garments spotted by the flesh. Yeah. 
hating, and some other versions say abhorring or loathing or detesting. Very strong word. One of the traits of Jesus mentioned in Hebrews 1 9, he hated iniquity. <laughs> That's our blessed Lord. He hated iniquity. That's why he talked to like he did to the Pharisees and scribes, Sadducees. Abounding iniquity tempers a person's, can temper a person's love for God. No person can rescue a soul from hellfire to whom sin, all sin, is not obnoxious. See, a person who says they're trying to win others who doesn't hate sin isn't telling the truth. Yeah. Uh -huh. He has a fleshly concern. That's all he's got. Yeah. Uh -huh. This is not real at all. Of course, this attitude that we're talking about requires a new heart and a new spirit. Mm -hmm. this, is, this is about the only kind of message the prophets have. They sandwiched in there some prophecies about the coming Messiah, but most of their word to the generation they talked to, most of it was scathing rebukes. Yeah, right. yeah, Jesus, I think, is the, the perfectly illustrates this mm -hmm. in how he how he spoke to people. He did not talk to everybody the same. Yes, yes. That's right. Uh -huh. he, when, when he spoke, now there's two examples always come in my mind: is the woman at the well mm -hmm. and the woman caught in the act of adultery. Mm -hmm. Now, he was gentle with both of those women. He, yes. did, he did not talk to them like he did with the scribes oh, and Pharisees. Amen. He was, he was hard on the scribes and yeah. Pharisees. Yeah. Now, but he, he did say that when he said to the woman, the law, you, you've had five husbands. The yeah. man you're now with is not your yeah. husband. This was yeah. exposing her sin. He said right. to the woman got adultery, go and sin no more. That's yeah. right. So it's not that Jesus was soft yeah. on sin. No. no. Right. But he knew what was in a person. That's yeah. right. And so he, when, when he talked to those women, he, oh. he didn't yell at them. Mm -hmm. He didn't call them vipers, but he did call the Pharisees vipers. That's right. Okay. The generation of vipers. Amen. Mm -hmm. Yes, that's important to know. It's important to know what the psalmist said. Ye that love the Lord. Hmm. Hate evil. Yeah, amen. Mm -hmm. There it is. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, Jesus told his disciples, because iniquity shall abound, mm -hmm. that's, that's in the world. Uh-huh, yeah. Well, here it would have been in Jerusalem, too. Mm -hmm. The love of many shall wax cold. See, mm -hmm. so when, when the environment mm -hmm. is on the descent, mm -hmm. Your love can wax cold, and you still look pretty good. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right? By comparison, did you learn from this that we're living in a society that almost daily is going down, down, yeah. down, uh -huh. down, mm -hmm. and reaching death we never dreamed. You know, yeah. we almost never dreamed years ago such a such a thing would happen. Mm -hmm. But it's happened, and that means this is we're in a severe danger zone. Amen. Yep. Yeah. Spiritual signs ought to be posted all over the place. Yeah. Beware, beware, yeah, yeah. beware. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. Don't walk here. Don't walk uh -huh, there. Yeah. Don't drink it this well. Yeah. <laughs> Amen. Yeah, the deterioration of morality carries with it an undeniable satanic influence. It's like a gravitation, a spiritual gravitational mm -hmm. pull down. Uh -huh. But wherever iniquity is just abounded everywhere. It's like strong gravity. You gotta get up up above where this gravity gravitational uh -huh. pull isn't there. Yeah. You gotta get up above in the heavenly yeah. places to escape that pull down. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Amen. Now hating even the garment. Hmm. In other words, read clothing or tunic or clothes or outer garment or cold or inner garment. There's a spiritual application to mm -hmm. something like this. Mm -hmm. Those in Sardis had defiled their garments. They'll walk with me in white. But his word used here is a different word. Mm -hmm. He's not talking about spiritual filth here. He's talking about physical, external garments. Mm -hmm. Like the ones Adam and Eve had on. Mm -hmm. 
Mm -hmm. That's what he's talking about. Hating even the garment that's spotted by the flesh. That is that accent. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The flesh. The kind of garments that make the flesh stand mm -hmm. out. Yeah. Mm. Mm. Solomon mentioned the, quote, attire of a harlot. See, a harlot dressed a certain way. That was her mm -hmm. advertisement. Was yeah. the way. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, they still practice it. It's where they have public harlots, they still mm -hmm. dress. They don't have to stand out there in a business suit. Mm -hmm. They still do this. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Used to drive by them. They had a oh, yeah. district like this in Gary, red uh -huh. light district, and mm -hmm. they didn't come out in a nice dress, you know, a suit. They come out in the attire of a harlot. Mm -hmm. But I'm telling you here that there are garments oh, yeah. that accent the flesh. Yeah. We're told, take those kind of garments. Yeah, that's right. Amen. There's a spiritual application. I understand uh -huh, that there's yeah. someone laying this in the Sardis that have not defiled their garments. Uh -huh, it, uh -huh. That was a spiritual sense. Right. I'm saying it was not a sense here. Uh-huh. That Amen. Tamar deliberately when she sat in the way where Judah uh -huh. was doing by, yeah. she deliberately attired herself so she looked like a harlot. That's, that's right. what Judah thought she was. Uh huh. Yes. Yeah. Garments spotted by the flesh. Hmm. For the child of God, uh, garments that are spotted by the flesh, that's the opposite of modest mm -hmm. clothing. Yeah. Modest apparel is the word in 1 Timothy 2 9. Modest apparel. That would be clothing that allowed for the display of the flesh, being scanty. <coughs> In fact, that's the first thing God did. He replaced scanty clothes. Yes. Mm -hmm. Amen. Said they made aprons. Uh huh. Yeah. We call mm -hmm. them loin. Loin. Uh huh. Co covered the loins. Yeah. That's all. That's what they were. Mm hmm. It was the early version of the bikini. Uh huh. Yeah. But they were. God replaced them. Wasn't spotted by the flesh. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Amen. <coughs> This way. I remember a time, this happened in the 70s, <laughs> the latter 70s. I was holding a, a Bible study at a house of a new, some relatively new converts, and they were inviting their friends in. Mm -hmm. and we were, there were several, quite a few people there. <coughs> and one lady came in a bikini. It was a hot, hot summer night. Uh -huh. She came in a bikini and set herself on the couch. And I went over to her and I said, now maybe you, uh, you can't come to this meeting look like this. Mm -hmm. The lady's name that was at the house, her was named Gretchen. I said, Gretchen, you got a bathrobe? Mm -hmm. Won't be too hot? She said, yes. I said, bring it out. This lady's going to wear this bathrobe if she's going to stay here. Mm -hmm. She did. She was. Yeah. I hated the garments spotted by the yeah. flesh, and yeah. I still do. Yeah. Some of them go up by the sidewalk out here. I hate the way they look. Yeah. I hate it. Mm -hmm. There's some people I gotta look the other way when they're coming. Yeah, oh, try. Right. Amen. Amen. Is it men too? Yeah, try. Right. Gotta look the other way. See, that's a garment. Hating the garment spotted by the flesh. Uh huh. It's showing you the, 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 the degree to which this hatred of iniquity goes, see? Mm -hmm. He's not just focusing on clothing. That's a, it's just, you even go this far. Mm -hmm. Don't just hate the deeds. Hate anything that provokes the deeds. Yeah. Uh -huh. Amen. Even the garments by yeah. the flesh. Amen. I know that uh, this has transformed the way a lot of people mm -hmm. presented themselves in public. Mm -hmm. If they believed it. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. But there are people, there are people that are close enough to God to hate even the garments spotted uh -huh. by the flesh. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So you see, it, it's a, it's an extreme way. It's like apostasy, that's over here. Uh huh. That's, that's the worst. Uh huh. Then you got way over here, you got the garment spotted by the flesh, that's how it all begins. Mm hmm. Everything in between. Mm hmm. Is to be is to be healed. Amen. Fleshly lusts, mm. war, see, they're militant. That's right. Yeah. A person who attires himself in something that provokes mm. lust yeah. 
has assaulted the saints. Uh huh. Amen. 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 That's right. They've assaulted. Yes. Mm. You see, well, they didn't mean anything by that. Well, and that just means they're stupid. Uh huh. Yeah. Yeah. That's what that means. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Let's be modest. Let's be more gentle. Unlearned and ignorant. Yeah. Was our job to tell them. Mm hmm. Don't go. Don't do that. But she lusts war against the soul. The Lord reveals that the fear of the Lord, mm -hmm. this is Proverbs 8, 13, the fear of the Lord is to hate evil. Mm. Whatever, yeah. whatever form it takes. Mm -hmm. If it's false doctrine, if it's drunkenness, if it's adultery, if it's pride, if it's the way they dress, or mm -hmm. you hate it. Why do you hate it? It's for your protection. Yeah, amen. amen. It isn't like this is a law and you better hate it. It's not, mm -hmm. That's not what we're saying. What we're saying is this is for your protection. If you don't hate it, mm. someday you'll be taken in by it. Yes, amen. 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 That's right. How do you think some of these preachers in Java, mm. as well as every uh -huh. other city, yeah. have fallen? Mm -hmm. How do you think it happened? That's mm. right. It started out in no doubt just like this. Yes. Mm. Amen. That there was too much flesh on display. Yes. Yeah. They were too weak to, too weak to hold up under. Uh huh. That didn't excuse the person who fell. Understand? Uh huh. Yeah. The Lord reveals that the fear of the Lord is to hate evil. That hatred must be cultured. As by that I mean you have, you have to grow. The, the, mm -hmm. the longer you're in the Lord, the more they. The diameter of that grows. Mm -hmm. See, it gets bigger. Amen. You see different definitions of evil. Mm. You see that anything we that's not of God is evil. And you get that right down to it. Mm -hmm. And this text that you quote here from Proverbs, the evil way covers a lot of territory. Oh, it sure does. Mm -hmm. It sure does. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, one way God described a wicked person. Psalm 36, 4, he said he abhors not evil. That was, that was one way they, he described the wicked. Yeah. They abhor not evil. Yeah. David said, I hate the work of them that turn aside. It shall not cleave unto me. See? Yeah. He was a man after God's own heart. So such a disdain, disdain for transgression and sin in any form will serve to protect you. Mm -hmm. It'll help you to make a difference, see? It'll help you to, to make a... If someone's sitting there half naked, it, chances are they're not really too tender. Uh -huh. yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. but, you, but you need to discern whether that's the case or not. You need to discern that. Well, I thank God for Brother Jude, Amen. our Lord's half-brother. Mm -hmm. This had to have related some to these false prophets. Uh -huh. yeah. He said that they, uh, these false prophets were, and Peter said the same thing, were known for their lust against lust. Uh -huh. yeah. He made that note, and so this just might have been traced back to something like that. We don't know. I think we'll close there tonight. Any of you have something you'd like to add? Yes, Brother Rick. You talked about this downward pull and that you have to get mm -hmm. up and out of that. You know, at, at the law of gravity is like a demonstration of that because everything oh, yeah. under that law oh, yeah. has a downward pull. That's right. And the only way to get beyond that law is to get out of the world. Uh -huh. That's right. And that's really what you're talking about. You've Amen. Gotta, what it amounts to for the believer is staying where you're seated in Christ Jesus right. and not letting yourself mm -hmm. be put back under the law of sin and death again. Mm -hmm. you, can't, right. you can't do that. And, and exchanges with people can cause that to happen. What you look at yes. can cause that uh -huh. to happen. And yes. so you've got you to stay out from underneath that law because when you come into Christ, you're free from the law of sin and death. See, under the, under the heavenly places, mm -hmm. the... The law of sin and death is dominant everywhere. Yeah. Uh -huh. Amen. Yeah. You know, they, um... Talking about retrieving people that are they're steeped in sin. It, it, out in the universe, they got these things called black holes, 
and they, they, they judge them by how much matter or how many things it sucks into it, you know, how big they are. But um, if you get too close to one, they call it the event horizon. If you get too close to it, you, you're not coming back. I mean, it sucks you. It has such an amount of, gra of grav gravity pull on you, it'll get a hold of you and suck you right into it. And this is the same thing. If you get too close to sin, you think, I'm strong enough, yeah. I can endure this, mm -hmm. I can handle this. You know, no, you can't. That's you know, you couldn't before when you were in the world. Yes, what, right. what what makes you difference? Because you've been given grace. Now, he's telling us, don't don't think that you're stronger. That you can you can somehow walk into the the middle of sin on your own. No, you're going to have to think this thing through, pray about it, give yourself to the Lord, yeah. and then judge whether or not you're strong enough to even confront yes, this right. thing. Yes. Now, I've I've had encounters. Even some lately, where uh, I wanted to make a difference, but it just didn't make a difference. And so you got to step back and say, "Wait a minute, uh, this is not the Lord's not leading me in this direction." That's right. Because if you're not making a difference, you got to be wise enough to say it, that <laughs> you're not. And which means, what's the opposite of that? It means you're making trouble. There's something that you're making it worse. See, well, this, is, this is a kind of a kingdom principle. Yeah. In the book of Acts, I think you'll, if you trace back, everyone who was changed was changed after one encounter. Uh -huh. yes. I think you'll find yeah. it. That's pretty consistent. It wasn't yeah. like Paul was visited by, you know, so-and-so and Barnabas went to see him. and yeah. We're all one encounter yes. see now this tells you that the lord is the one that really amen that's right does the change and it depends how much of the lord uh -huh. you have yeah. or how much like christ you are yes yes amen or yeah. how strong you are see all that and that's something that if you don't know that mm -hmm. that you need to examine yourself and make some kind of an assessment of where you're at because it's going to determine what you do and where you go and all of this mm -hmm. and remember that you don't have to if you're if you're not in an acceptable state you don't have to stay there we grow up into Christ amen. in all things so no one is locked into an inferior position yes. amen. That, I think I've said that right no one is locked into an inferior position mm -hmm. you can grow in Christ but if you are in one there's some things you just you can't do. Yes, Sydney. Uh, when you had said earlier, towards the beginning of your sermon actually, you said if the church is unstable, then the people outside of the church need to need to be on hold. I thought this is because the church if the church is unstable, then how can then how can a newborn Christians yeah. how can they give newborn Christians a good foundation in Christ? Mm -hmm. The church, the church has to be strong to be able to um, to help um, to be able to give new well, new people to the church a good foundation. That's right. Well, that's absolutely right. Amen. Yes, Sister Ada. There's a danger in trying to empathize or identify too closely with those that you're trying to save, that you're mm -hmm. trying to redeem. Um, or offer the, the word of, of God to it and it's good to be reminded that the thing that we have in common is what necessitated our salvation mm -hmm. that's what we have in common with people and that will keep us humble but it's the difference that is the, the word of life spoken into our lives that is our security and their hope mm -hmm. and so making the difference you know, being able to see well Christ did make the difference and if that difference in me is diminished at all, then neither party is advantaged in any way. That's right. Mm -hmm. That's right. Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. Yes, Mr. Aaron? You know, we've, we've made a lot of, a lot of comments uh, for quite some time about the errors of the Great Commission mentality, you know, sa of saving the lost at, at all costs. I, I think that one... <coughs> underlying uh, error that has produced all this is seeing evangelizing the lost as some something very different work than ministering to believers. 
Hmm. Very good. Don't they both need to hear the same gospel? Yes, mm -hmm. yeah, same thing. Amen. Mm -hmm. So just one has ears the ears and elaboration of it. That's all. Yeah. Right. So preaching, preaching the gospel. I mean, we've said this before, but there is a a, a misunderstanding that you don't preach the gospel to believers. Hmm. So ministering the gospel to the church is not at all sacrificing evangelism. Mm -hmm. That's actually equipping and enabling That's right. and yes. and yes. showing the very treasure that the lost people need. Amen. Evangelists were, get, were given to the church. It was said in the church. For equipping the saints for the work of service. That's the right. The so they, what, they, what, they don't have to, they don't confine their activity there. They went out, but they were given to that's their primary activity is to the church because we need we need the spiritually gifted men in the church who can expound and open up the gospel and show the different implications of it and isn't haven't we all grown a lot in that yeah in fact the epistles are an exposition yes. of the gospel yeah. that's what they're expounding is the gospel mm -hmm. and of course there are there are different different aspects of the gospel. I mean, it's a it's a big message. It's a broad, you know, a very deep message. So it's not that we just say this, repeat the same things over and over again to everybody in the church and everybody outside of the church. What I mean is that it's a consistent message. That's right. It's, it's yeah. preaching, preaching Christ, preaching His person, the purpose, the work of God, the will of God. Mm -hmm. And of course, there will be differences of, of emphasis and differences of application depending on where where someone is but right. but the essential message is the same whether you're in or out amen mm -hmm. did you want to say something journey i think he was um thinking it was going to get ready for prayer time he was going to ask oh, for prayer. Okay. <laughs> yes Alice. another reason that i thought what why paul put everything else on hold because the church was unstable because if Jesus came back while the church was still unstable, it would have been worse for them in the judgment because they had been exposed to the things that would have made them stable. That's yeah. very good. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right, we'll have a word of prayer. Our dear Heavenly Father, we thank, we thank Thee for this text. It promotes introspection in evaluation, we want to be those that can differentiate between those who need mercy and those who need stronger words. Yeah. We don't want to confuse yeah. and be, deliver soft words to the hardened center and hard words to the one who's receptive. So we ask for grace to minister properly, knowing that you'll work through our efforts. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen.